In the last video, I showed you how to beat an Oscar. And in this video, I will be showing you how to beat Margot, the Omen King. Depending on which route you've taken, this is probably your third encounter with him by now. Unfortunately, we can't file a restraining order and skip this fight. So I decided to make this guide detailing his most annoying movesets and how to deal with them. Keep in mind that I used a melee build for this fight, so the best strategies may differ for you depending on what kind of playstyle you have. His first phase is very similar to his original second phase from when you first fought him. He uses glowing weapons, like his throwing knives and hammer. This time, however, he will also use a longsword in his right hand. The sword doesn't do any elemental damage in phase 1, so you're able to block it with relative ease, so long as your shield has 100 guard absorption. It does do some bleed damage, however. Although, this wasn't a problem for me at all, because the blood loss buildup depletes so fast. The thing to look out for are all of his glowing attacks. They do holy damage, which means that even if you are able to block those attacks with a shield, you'll still take damage through your guard. It may not seem like a lot at first, but after blocking multiple holy attacks in rapid succession, the damage adds up substantially. Because of this, rolling is your best option for this fight. Although, don't be afraid to block the occasional holy attack anyways, because it can still save your life. Scholar's Shield doesn't seem to add any additional benefit to elemental damage, but it does help you keep your stamina bar up, so it can still be pretty useful in this fight. His combos are quite fast, and rolling can be really challenging when you don't know his attack patterns. Unless you're a pro gamer, this is not a boss fight you can just walk into and get it on the first or second try. His moves are too fast and unpredictable, so I recommend going into the fight for the first few tries with a practice mentality. I did about 5 tries solely with the intent to learn his combos and movesets. By the end of those practice runs, I found that I was able to dodge roll most of his attacks a lot more easily, and found myself getting to Phase 2 more reliably. He uses a lot of similar attacks in Phase 2, so if you get good at dodging his attacks during his first phase, your chances of beating him during the second phase are much higher. The timing of his sword combos can be very difficult to get right. A major theme for this fight is rolling later than you think you have to. This boss seems specifically designed to punish panic rollers, so do not roll until you are sure he's about to swing. The thing to look out for is when he pulls out his glowing hammer. He typically does this towards the end of his combos. There's two moves with the hammer that he loves to use. The first is when he raises it over his head, and a moment later, slams it down on top of you. You can tell when he's about to bring the hammer down based on the positioning of his foot. It'll move right before he's about to slam, so I recommend dodging to his side, moving behind him, to get a couple of hits in during this part. It's usually a safe time to damage him, but occasionally he will follow it up with an attack immediately after. So wait for a brief moment and make sure he's not about to do that before trying to get multiple hits in. Another move he likes to use with the hammer is when he swings it around his body along with his sword. This means it's two hits in total, both coming from the same direction. If you roll too early, you'll dodge the sword, but the hammer will hit you. And if you roll too late, both his weapons will connect, doing high damage. I found that by standing close to him before this attack, I could safely roll into his sword while moving around to his backside, and his hammer would end up missing me completely because I was behind his reach. So ideally, one dodge will protect you from the first part of his attack, and you'll be completely out of the way for the second part of it. I usually hit him once or twice on his backside after he performed this move. There's one more attack with the hammer to look out for, but it's pretty easy to get the hang of it. He actually used it the first time you fought him. It's when he jumps high into the air and tries to bring the hammer down on top of you. When he's in the air, roll toward him. He will land behind you, so spin around quickly and you can usually get in a couple of good hits before he turns around and starts attacking you again. If you stand far enough away from him, there's three attacks you should look out for. One is his glowing spear. He'll raise it high over his head, waiting for a moment before throwing it at you. This attack is difficult to dodge because it takes him so long to throw it. Like the hammer attack, he'll lower his foot right when he's about to throw it at you. Roll later than you think you need to. Again, this seems to be the common theme for this boss fight. The good thing about this attack is his wind-up time before throwing doesn't seem to vary at all. He takes forever to throw it every single time. 
Something I noticed is if you close the distance and stand right in front of him when he's about to throw the spear, he cannot hit you with it, leaving him wide open for multiple hits. Another range attack he likes to do is with his glowing knives. This is another attack he used during your first encounter with him. They don't do a lot of damage, but he has a habit of throwing them whenever you back up to drink a flask. If you put enough distance between you, there's a chance you can bait him into an easy attacking position. He'll jump towards you with his sword and a glowing spear and try to land on you. Like the in-air hammer attack, roll towards him and he'll end up landing behind you, leaving him wide open to several hits. You can use an Ash of War to do a lot of damage to him when he does this. I tried to bait him into using this move as much as I could and got him to do it two or three times in one go, getting in a lot of good damage. During phase one, he has one charge attack where he'll conjure the glowing spear, but instead of throwing it, he'll run straight at you. I recommend dodging to the sides right before the spear is about to hit you. If you're standing close to him, he might conjure his dagger into his hand. He'll swing both his sword and his glowing dagger in rapid succession. The glowing dagger will change into a glowing sword. And finally, at the end of the combo, the sword will change to his hammer. I don't recommend standing anywhere near him when he performs this combo. He does too much damage and there's not a clear opening for you to get any hits in. So roll away and use the time to heal and let your stamina bar recover. He has another attack where he'll reach into the sky and summon a massive amount of glowing swords, which will fall down onto the arena after a short amount of time. They come down in an X shape, so try and pick one of the four wedges between the columns of swords and stick to that area until they disappear. He drops a large group of them around his body at the center. You'll be tempted to do damage to him while he's summoning the swords, but you may end up getting hit by the cluster around him, so try not to be too greedy when you see him do this. The trickiest part about this attack is making sure you're not in a corner when he uses it. If you are, he can effectively block you from escaping, and you'll be trapped in a very small area with him. There are small gaps between the swords that you may be able to run through, but this is difficult when your camera is locked onto him. Although you can use spirit summons for this fight, I never used any for my final attempt, although I've heard that debuffing a boss with them can be pretty helpful. You'll know when you've made it to phase 2 when he falls to his knees. You will want to get some free damage on him, but he actually has a lot of damage resistance during his transition, and a few seconds later, he will explode with a massive AoE attack that does an incredible amount of damage, so I don't recommend trying to hit him here. I suggest you back up and heal or rebuff any of your weapons in preparation for the next phase. The ground will turn into murky water, and random geysers will start to bubble up around the arena. Stay away from them, because they will eventually explode and do high damage. He will buff his sword with yellow flames, meaning that blocking is now even less effective than it was during the first phase of the fight. You can still do it to save your life in a pinch, but you will take damage from the fire through your guard. So once again, if you want to avoid taking damage completely, dodging is your best bet. If you are not good at dodging when you enter this fight, I promise you'll be a lot better by the end of it. A lot of his combos are similar to his phase one, but he uses them more frequently. And when he hits the ground with his attacks, he can spawn one of those geysers in the water. If you are moving around him in a circle, you will likely get caught in the delayed explosion if you aren't paying attention to your feet. He can also buff his blade with a red aura, inflicting bleed damage when he hits you. There are two attacks to look out for when his sword is red. The first is the most deadly. He will charge at you and try to run you through. This is his grab attack, and it does massive damage if he gets you. I tried blocking this a couple of times, but he just went right through my guard and skewered me anyways. So roll to the side right before he hits you. The good news is he's left wide open after he does this, with his sword arm high up in the sky. The other move to look out for when his sword is red is when he swings at you from the sides. He likes to hold his sword over his head right before he does this move, so look out for that. A small trail of explosions appears shortly behind the path of his sword, so don't stand where he just swung. Try and roll around him to avoid them completely. He usually does this twice in rapid succession, so be sure to dodge both swings before you try to get some damage in on him. When his sword is red, it's easier to dodge and get damage on him but he also does more damage to you, so it's high risk and high reward. When his sword is yellow, he likes to do non-stop combos, but a lot of them are just more intense versions of the one he used in phase one, 
which is why I recommended practicing your rolling before you seriously take him on. The better you are at dodging his attacks in Phase 1, the better you'll be in Phase 2. If I had one crucial piece of advice for someone who's stuck on this boss, it would be roll later than you think you need to. Remember, he holds his attacks for a decent amount of time before he actually swings at you. The worst thing you can do during this fight is panic roll. I have no doubt that the whole design reasoning for this boss is to punish those who have not mastered rolling yet. He's a difficult boss, but that means that by learning how to dodge him, you'll be able to dodge just about any other boss in the game at this point in your playthrough. I was level 60 when I first fought him, and had 10 flasks, but you don't need that many. But I don't recommend going into this fight with any fewer than 8 flasks. He's a very difficult boss to master, but I believe that every single one of you can beat him, so long as you don't give up. Thanks for watching this guide, I hope it helped, and as always, I'm wishing you all good luck.